Hey guys and welcome to the Ozone. Today, uh, I wasn't actually gonna record anything, uh, and then someone notified me on the Discord. Thank you very much, by the way. Uh, that this, this just came out. This literally came out five minutes ago. Ah, <laughs> I hate it because you 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 never know when Matt Pat's gonna release a FNAF theory video. It's always so unexpected. Uh, but to be honest, I was expecting one because he hasn't done one on 1.35 a.m. today, which I'm assuming um, is going to be what this is. So I reckon we should just get straight into it. So the title of this video is Game Theory FNAF Golden Freddy, not what we thought. I think I know what this is about. <laughs> it's about Golden Freddy. But in 1.35 a.m., I have read it all, by the way. Um, unlike all the other reactions I've done where I haven't read the books I have now read all the books, I've now read all the stories uh, including 1.35am and the last story uh, has Golden Freddy in it and it has a bit of a twist and, I, and I'm very confused and, I, and hopefully this is going to answer something about it so let's begin in 3, 2, 1, bam Let me come home with you <laughs> Is there room for one? Can I come home with you? Let me come home with you. Ah! This is the room for one more thingy. Where the mini arenas. Oh yeah, spoilers, I guess. Spoilers for, <laughs> for the books. This is room for one more, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh! <laughs> the thing is with these stories is... You can imagine them in your head, but you you can't see it in real life, and you can't really... It's not a movie, you know, so you don't really see it. You just have to think it. The thoughts are horrible, but this scene... <laughs> I can't imagine how scary it would be in an actual movie. Yeah! Oh, imagine. Imagine being... um. Hello, Internet! I Welcome forgot his name. to Book Theory! Because if you have one moderately popular indie smash game in your franchise, chances are you also have yourself a 10 installment book deal. That's barely an exaggeration. Bendy and the Ink Machine, 3, with more promised on the way. Hello Neighbor, really? 6. Heck, he he wait, that whoa, 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 whoa. Hello, Hello Neighbor? Is Hello Neighbor actually that big? Okay. <laughs> I know they release like another game which is like hide and seek or something but i don't i didn't know it was that big doesn't have an entire trilogy dedicated to the Ooh. horrific backstory of the jump rope girl <laughs> no joke at this point in my life i'm reading more video games than i'm playing but of course today that we're is not true talking about any of those other franchises we're talking about the grandpappy the one that paved the way for all those who would dare to follow in its footsteps that is Five very true too freddy's and it's eight books as well as its two graphic novel reimaginings of the first two books but yes <laughs> that's 10 books 10 books um how many of them have i read i'd say i've read like half of them yeah i've i've read the silver eyes i swear i got like halfway through the twisted ones and then i just got bored uh and then i've read all the all the thingies and the freddy files i've read as well Here's the best part, your friends. True to this franchise, the books were supposed to end at Fazbear Frights number five. We're currently at Fazbear Frights number and three. And then the we got another two coming sight. as well. That was gonna be it. That was the end of the line. Mystery over. But oh, oh no, my friends. Of course not. Now there are two more. Final Wait, whoa, 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 whoa! And... Something just hit me, and I'm not talking about my hand. There were five books at the start, as in the five nights. And then that, then then he added a sixth night, and then a seventh night, and there's seven. Oh my god. Has has that been like a theory, or has it only just hit me? Okay, that's that's weird. That there's seven, and there's usually seven like nights. Every game after FNAF. 
three. I used to joke that the fan was the scariest oh, part yeah. of this franchise. Oh no, not anymore, dear theorists. Now it's multi-platform merchandising. <sighs> so Fazbear Frights number three, titled 1.35 AM, just came out and, oh boy, there is a lot to talk about with this one. Yes, if there you is. remember, Scott has made it pretty darn clear that this new book series is meant to help us solve the mysteries yep. from the past. And that the stories are, as they say in every book's official description, pulled from all different corners of the FNAF lore. But exactly. unlike the past two Fast exactly. and Frights books where the connections have been a bit uh, looser, I suppose is the best way to describe a time-traveling ball pit that leads to a scene of some no, exactly. 1985 pizzeria murders. This one the is a lot contained in this more closely one, connected. In 1.35 a.m. all feel very strongly connected to, well, yep. Like I just said, every corner of the FNAF canon. The stories here are starting to show how they're connected to not only each other, but also how they're connected to the original book trilogy, and yes, how they're even connected to the games, creating this elaborate web of complicated mm, animatronic yeah. death. But more yeah. than anything else, these books are starting to confirm things for us. Theories and suspicions that we've had for the better part of and the last And I really years. like that. I love how Scott is doing these books. The, the novel... The FNAF novel wasn't great, like, I couldn't really get into it, because firstly it was too long, secondly I knew it basically wasn't can- well, it kind of is, but it's not entirely canon to the series, and so we, we can't get much lore bits from that, uh, and it, yeah, it was just too long really, and I love how these are just short stories, short like two to three hour stories I guess, uh, that you can read. Uh, and it will give you, like, missing information that we've missed. Missing... <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Years, which, you know, is kind of nice to receive some level of validation. But exactly. Like, it is a lot to That's cover. what I was trying to so say. So I'm going to cover this one like I've covered the last two books. Today's episode is going to be dedicated to a general overview of the stories, spotlighting some of the most important details for theory crafting, and explaining what I think this new batch of stories is trying to tell us about the series' mysteries. And then the next video, we're going to be doing a deep dive into probably the biggest mystery of all three books so far. Another two-parter. killer animatronic, The Stitch Raid. Oh. This guy is... This is the only part, these are the only parts that I haven't read yet. I've just skipped, skipped all of their epilogues. Uh, I'm going to need to do audiobooks on them. Um, so yeah, it, by the way, I do audiobooks. So if you, <laughs> if you want to read any of these stories, uh, I am just about, well, I'm get just started 1.35am. Uh, but I finished The New Kid and Room for One More if you want to go read them. So, uh... Yeah, go watch them. <laughs> really interesting, and his story is starting to weave through most of the nine other small stories that we've covered in these other books, and what he means might actually have some severe implications for not just the original trilogy of novels, but also the future of the games. Like I said, more mm. on that next week, but for today, let's start ah. with our title story, okay. 1.35 a.m. This one is pretty straightforward. Delilah is a young woman with a tragic backstory. Her parents both died when she was 11, at which point she was bounced around and abused. I know. All this. Sadly, I know all this. It's nice to see years. it in like Eventually, graphic form though. she finds though. a stable home and happiness with a man named Richard. They get married and Delilah excitedly looks forward to finally having a child of her own so she can finally complete the family that she never had. Yeah. Everything is going great in her life until Richard divorces her. Now she's alone and sadder than ever. And then she dies trapped in a ventilation shaft after being tortured by the embodiment <laughs> of the child that she never had. Children's entertainment ladies and gentlemen. Okay so I may have you... skipped a few steps there you but it's skipped a lot the idea one day delilah finds an animatronic doll named yeah. ella at a garage sale a doll that reminds her of the child that she always dreamed mm -hmm. of ella having. and emma Quote, with brown curly hair big dark eyes and plump pink cheeks the doll looked almost exactly like the baby delilah had envisioned yeah. having someday with richard she'd been sure that she was going to be a mother so sure that she'd named the baby before the baby was even conceived her name would be emma delilah reached for the tag that hung on the doll's wrist and it's called ella it's ella ella so close to Emma. I love Delilah that. felt an odd tingle slither through her body. And she buys the doll in part because it reminds her of her almost never child and because it has a built-in alarm clock. Emotionally yep. scarring with a side of functionality just the way I like it. <laughs> anyway, she sets the alarm inside of Ella for 1.35 p.m. to help wake her up for her shift mm. at work. But the alarm doesn't go off. Yep. And just like that, Delilah gets it her It goes off at 1.35 a.m., which doesn't So she help does her. what any good parent would do in that situation, immediately hurls her would-be child into the nearest dumpster. Yikes, Delilah. Maybe it's better that you and Richard didn't have that kid after all. Anyway, that night she's awoken at 1.35 a.m. 
by Ella. Delilah assumes that she accidentally set the alarm for AM rather than PM, which reminds me of the time I didn't bother to set the clock right on my Tamagotchi and was forced to scoop his poop every day at four in the morning. I can't imagine why he died. It's certainly not my fault. Okay. Anyway, she tries to find the trashed Ella doll, but can't. And from that point forward is slowly driven insane by the doll yes, waking her exactly. up every morning at 1.35. It's haunting her. I mean, you know, I'm going to be, I'm interested in what he's going to say on this. Get a decent night's sleep. It's not a 3 a.m. I've seen theories that it's like correlations that, to the, yeah, knowing the that Fred she'll never plush. feel safe again, she climbs into a ventilation shaft in a building under construction and dies. Quote from the book, she'd never wanted things, she wanted love. Oof, it is a heartbreaker, man. The stories in these books so far have been pretty sad, but this one is just Tragic. It is. In fact, all three stories from this particular book are just rough. Now, this yes. story has two yes, really... Yes, they are. These stories in particular are so tragic, so sad. The endings are so weird, actually, um, because the ending of the, the first book, the, the first story, 1.35am, it's just her in a ventilation shaft, stuck there forever. She just wanted love. That was literally the last line. Uh, chills down my spines when I when I read that the first time. And then the second story, uh, <laughs> I mean, we'll let Matt Pat talk about it. We'll let Matt Pat talk about it. The important details in it. Details that seem to make the third Lila's story I was just confused about, which is probably what he's going to talk about more in this the episode. Book canon, as well as the games. So let's start with the books first. In 1:35 a.m., yeah, the Ella, Ella doll is described yeah. as a quote helper doll manufactured by Fazbear Entertainment. Continuing forward with that quote, the booklet had a list of what Ella was designed for. She could keep time and serve as an alarm clock, manage appointments, keep track of lists, take photos, read stories, sing songs, and PH. even serve drinks. Serve drinks? Delilah shook her head. She, now, she can test games, pH levels in really water. to learn much about Henry, the creator of the animatronics. But in the novel trilogy, Silver Eyes, Twisted Ones, and Fourth Closet, we get to meet not only his daughter Charlie, but also some of his other creations, including, wouldn't you know it, a doll Ella. named Ella, who is built to serve tea. From the Silver Eyes novel, quote, out sailed Ella on her track, a child-sized doll bearing a teacup and saucer in her tiny hands like an offering, end quote. Now, across all three novels, we never get a solid physical description of the Ella doll, but in another book, The Freddy Files, which collects all the main information about the franchise, we do get to see our first illustration of the doll, and wouldn't you know it, everything matches the description of Delilah's little garage sale find from 1.35am. Yeah, exactly. But again, wearing a puppy sleeved 1980s era bright I mean, blue full I know all of this because I'm so good trim and a at big bow FNAF the and <laughs> it's the same doll. I'm just wondering how he's going to interpret this story and how it connects to the, the games. events of Fourth Closet. Somehow this is the doll that Henry created for his daughter oh. Charlie who I need Oh, he, he said after the events of the fourth, fourth Closet. I haven't read the Fourth Closet but I know a few lore bits about it. And that is plausible. To technically remind you is his daughter, because again, remember, his daughter died at a young age, and he replaced her with a series of four Yeah, it was the last step, it was Charlie the fourth. growing up at various yeah. ages, so Ella technically is an early version of his own daughter. Mm -hmm. Figured I'd throw that little factoid in there, since, you know, this is a real and totally valid plot point from the novelized series of events in this very easy-to-understand series. But that's not all. While I was reading the story, <laughs> Sorry, the guys. way Delilah decides to hide in the ventilation shaft felt really strange to me like why it was super yeah. random but also was one of those things that felt so oddly specific that it felt like it had to have had a bigger purpose so I dug around and found this for you for your consideration I present to you night two of sister location so funny story a dead body was found in this vent once okay so not that funny but it's a story so could Delilah be True. I'll say that's true. However, that would mess with the sister location timeline. Uh, as in, as in, sister location would have to come way later because in one thirty-five a.m. If I recall correctly, um, uh, Delilah goes and gets Ella, uh, and she reads out that it's uh, a robot from Fazbear Entertainment, right? And then she says. I've never heard of Fazbear Entertainment before. Surely you would have heard of Fazbear Entertainment if it was during the t like the reign of pizzerias. You know what I mean? So it's 
that is an interesting point. That is a very strange correlation there. Um, I don't think it was intended, um, and I don't think the dead body would would have been Delilah. I think he would have gone more into it there. But um, interesting to think about. I just think that the timings would be. I feel like uh, all of the Fazbear Fright stories w would have to happen after all of the events of FNAF or of the games. Um, but that's a good that's a good theory right there. Um, I might have to look more into that. That body that was actually found in the vents of Circus Babies Entertainment and Rentals? Maybe, but probably more likely it's alluding to that story from Sister Location rather than directly the same one. You see, in yeah. the book we're told that yeah, Delilah's yeah, I'd agree with is a site that's under construction, a three-story structure that feels a bit like an office building. Sister Location, meanwhile, takes place in an underground facility underneath a residential home, so it's probably not the same building. At the same time, though, the story makes it clear that Delilah was drawn to this place. Quote, the answer to her plight was in here. She was sure of it. Some place here she was going to find a way to escape Ella forever. End quote. Time and again throughout all of these Fazbear Fright mm. stories, we're shown people being drawn to the Freddy Fazbear locations through some supernatural In the form. first story so of could each Delilah, book. So Delilah, or whoever died in the Vents of Sister location, have been compelled to come there? And this story is just giving us a hint as to how that happened. Me. And whereas the Delilah sister location connection might just be me reading too far into things, that certainly isn't true for our second story, Room for One More. In yes. this story, and yeah. stop me if any of this sounds familiar, Stanley is a night guard at a mysterious oh. underground facility full of little ballerina With green dolls lighting, blah, blah, blah. Yes, we know it's surface. sister location. Ding, ding, ding. It's like in one sentence, we just won FNAF bingo. Each night, he falls asleep on the job, wakes up to find a mini Rena doll on the desk, asking to go home with him, Stanley falls asleep again and when he wakes up the doll is magically gone over the next few days his arms start to swell his throat starts to bleed and yet he keeps going to work keeps finding dolls and keeps falling asleep eventually he learns that the dolls have been crawling into his mouth while he sleeps causing his body to swell yeah. to the point of bursting the end the moral of this story kiddos be a good employee don't <laughs> sleep on the job other that's true that's true someone could have been playing a prank on him because he was sleeping on the job anyway um uh, before he says anything about this, I know that this uh, draws a correlation to uh, Night 4, I think it is, of Sister Location, uh, where, where you've got the mask in front of you and all the mini arenas crawling up. Uh, and maybe it confirms the theory that the mini arenas do actually, um, you know, like, enter you, uh, be become you before Ennard ever, like, you know, before you become Ennard, basically. Um, so I think it's clearing up something there. I'm not sure what. Let's see what he says. Otherwise, little animatronic creatures are going to crawl into you and make you explode from the inside out. What's also interesting about this story is Stanley's dreams. Each time he sleeps while on duty, he has himself a strange dream. Yes. In the first, Funtime yeah. Foxy is a cab driver. In the second, the facility's power cuts off and he comes face to face with Funtime Freddy. And in the last one, Ennard is a dentist and Ballora is his dental assistant. Which I would say is one of the strangest All things to ever appear in this the franchise. But then again, I turn your attention to this corner where we have time traveling ball pit, anime Foxy. Foxy, Yandere Chica. Anyway, this one is pretty obvious, right? <laughs> Stanley is working at Circus Babies Entertainment and Rentals, that underground facility from Sister Location, and the dolls crawling into his mouth are a parallel to Ennard using Michael's progressively decaying body as a skin suit in that yeah. game's secret ending. I think yeah. this story might be trying to give us a more realistic interpretation of those events, or something that more closely matches what we see happening in those ending cutscenes. That instead of Michael being scooped and having a skeleton removed and all of that at the same time, that our protagonist might Michael instead is being slowly filled up with animatronic pieces night after night, giving him that progressively sickly look. And it's look a bit like the, the second story Stanley's in story Into the Pit. Mentions this, quote, he staggered and stumbled down the sidewalk. How it, the person's just getting some seeming worried, uh, others just annoyed, like it with robotic parts. them to see another person suffering, which feels right on point with how those cutscenes were depicted in Sister Location. But okay, of the three stories in 1:35 a.m., it's story number three, New Kid. That's the most exciting. To talk about. I agree with you there. Today's episode, because this one gets to the heart of what is still to this day the single biggest question of the series, and yeah. that is the identity of, of Golden, Golden Freddy. Freddy. Let me tell you, I thought we had this one pretty well nailed down. Yes, I know. Passing, AKA the vengeful spirit from Ultimate Custom. Okay, I'll give you a small theory on this one as well. Um, the the boy at the end was described to have curly hair. Cassidy, 
the the name Cassidy means curly hair. The thing is, though, um, I forgot his name. What was his name? The the new kid. Let's call him the new kid. The new kid went into Golden Freddy and was trapped there, but then was suddenly replaced with Cassidy. Let's say it's Cassidy. So could this be saying that not only is Cassidy in Golden Freddy, but like also the bite victim is? Possibly. No idea. Again, I haven't thought about this too much and I'm just waiting to see what MatPat says. We've still got another 10 minutes on just this. I'm so excited. Let's go. And yet this story, well, it causes me to question a few things about our conclusions. Yeah. First, let's go through a quick summary. Devin is a ninth grade social loner alongside his only friend, Mick. One day, a new kid in school named Kelsey, Kelsey shows interest it. in Kelsey. spending time with the two of them. Kelsey is good looking, he's charismatic, he immediately attracts the attention of all yep. the cool kids in school. And even though Kelsey, Devin, and Mick all get along as friends, eventually Devin gets jealous of Kelsey because Kelsey has everything that Devin wants. And so mm -hmm. to get some revenge, he lures him to an abandoned Freddy's restaurant long forgotten at the outskirts of the town. His plan is to trap Kelsey in a springlock suit for a few hours to scare him, but, well... I wonder what springlock suit that the is. The sheer mention of springlock suit immediately gives you a spoiler alert as to what's going to go down. Kelsey puts on the golden Freddy suit and gets skewered alive. Quote, the blood saturated the bear's matted fur in seconds. Began pooling on the floor. Devin stared at the moving blood. Very gruesome. Like it was a living Very. thing. A thinking red liquid lake stretching out. End quote. Mick and Devin leave Kelsey for dead for fear of Devin getting in trouble. But they're not quite sure he actually died. Nearly a week later, Devin is convinced to go back and check on Kelsey. But when he does, he's in for a surprise. Kelsey has vanished. Devin oh, eventually sticks chilled. his hand inside the suit's mouth to feel around for Kelsey's slumped over dead body, only for the spring locks to fail again and crush his arm. As Devin lies on the floor, trapped and slowly bleeding to death, he gets a final glimpse into the suit and, well, let's just say what he sees inside rocks the foundation of what we know about this franchise. Exactly. Quote, Devin exactly. one more attempt to free himself. Oh. The mouth opened even more and Devin got a sudden glimpse inside it's bittersweet. the suit. He gasped down low, past his arm. Devin Devin could see a body, a dead body, just like he thought he'd find when he came back here to check. But it wasn't exactly like he thought he'd find. This one had curly black hair. The body in the suit wasn't Kelsey. Now, there's a lot of weird things about this story that I don't quite have answers for, but I do have some thoughts about. First and foremost is the ending. You see, the book doesn't end with Devin's death, I know. Like you'd expect. It actually I know, it ends with Kelsey going to, like, the school again. And being the new kid, and he's like, are there any cool places to hide? So, I don't get it. <laughs> I do not get it at all. He continues to a final scene with Kelsey, alive yeah. and well, as the new kid at school introducing himself to two boys. It seems, at a first reading, like this should be a flashback to when Kelsey first meets Mick and Devin at school. Like, no. oh, this was the fateful meeting that would eventually lead to multiple of their deaths. But it's not. This is Kelsey at a new school meeting two new boys. In the story, Mick meets Kelsey first and then brings Kelsey doors of a school and the two boys Kelsey introduced himself to are less social outcasts like Mick and Devin, and more like bullies. We're expressly told that the boys are snickering at the passing kids. Even Kelsey's first line to them is different. It implies that Kelsey has somehow lived on after his supposed spring trap death in Golden Freddy. And now he's the new kid at yet another new school, introducing himself to two new kids. And the way that this final scene is written, with Kelsey scoping out the two boys from afar before he approaches them, it feels like he's actively targeting loner kids to make friends with. Could this be Kelsey's attempt yeah. to befriend kids that most overlook and then yeah. lure them back to a Freddy's pizzeria for some tragic incident to happen? It seems like it would be a stretch, but let's talk about Kelsey himself. Mr. Perfect. Kelsey is a weird entity in all this. Throughout the story, there are moments when his behavior is specifically called out as slightly off. Quote from the book, Kelsey tilted his head and studied Devin for a couple of seconds. For those two seconds, Devin had the weird feeling he was being evaluated. And again later, mm. Devin was tempted to stab Kelsey to see if he was a robot. Kids don't say stuff like that. 
Once they're actually at the pizzeria, he could things be. go surprisingly smoothly for Devin's plan. Or he's the line somehow in the book even goes like this, quote, don't know. this was going even better than he imagined. He thought he was going to have to talk Kelsey into trying on the Golden Freddy suit, but it looked like he was going to do it all on his own. It the was one like you should not have killed. <laughs> don't know, maybe. All of it seems to cast some level of suspicion on Kelsey's true motivations. And that's without me even mentioning the fact that his body just goes missing at the end of the book when it has been skewered and bled to death. Yeah. To me, it feels like Kelsey may just be our vengeful spirit from Ultimate Custom Night. In the story, Kelsey is described as having wavy blonde hair and blue eyes. Now, we have a pretty solid idea that its hair is straight with a slight wave, and it appears mm. to be blonde. But here's the kicker. This image was created by inverting colors. It's what gives it that blown out and kind of creepy appearance. Is it? If you invert the colors of the vengeful spirit's eyes, you get blue, just like Kelsey. Whoa. Why have I never done that? <laughs> I think I'm stupid. Those eyes are so... Yeah, th that's definitely it. He definitely has blue eyes. That's it. Look, look at that. That That is so realistic. He is described in the book. And it would fit the idea of a vengeful spirit. A kid who is angry about his own death. Perhaps mm. in an accident, like we see in FNAF 4. Or in so... Is Scott trying to tell us that by victim is the the one you should not the vengeful spirit? I would hate to say that. No, but no, no, because then that would mean that the protagonist of Ultimate Custom Night is Michael Afton. I'm confused. <laughs> in this particular story, looking to get revenge on other kids who are similar to his original killers. He goes from school to school, presumably ones near Fazbear locations, to somehow trick kids into getting killed by the suit. The parallels with Vengeful Spirit even go to the moments right around Kelsey's death in the book. This is how it's described. And the sound wasn't the bad part. It was bad, yes, but the bad part. Really, really bad part was the way the suit started jerking in a spastic, horrific dance. It looked mm. like the moth-eaten, mildew-blotched gold bear was convulsing, but it wasn't the bear, it was Kelsey. It's remarkably similar to the final cutscene from Ultimate Custom Night, where we oh, see yeah. again an angry Golden yeah. Freddy, presumably filled with the vengeful spirit, twitching off into the dark. Oh no, I hate this. Also worth noting is that the I hate Golden are Freddy. apparently big enough for kids to slump down into the body. Devin, when he initially can't find Kelsey's body inside the suit, decides to dig deeper down into it. Quote, had Kelsey somehow slid down into the suit? Was that his hair that Devin could see? This, to me, confirms what we see in FNAF 4's storage room cutscene. The strange tuft of hair that's come yeah. out of the body of the suit back then yeah, I got we that. weren't yeah. sure what this was trying to tell us what that tuft of hair was meant to be but now i think we can safely conclude that it is indeed a child stuffed into that body and that we're only seeing the top tuft of hair poking out it would seem to imply that there was a victim before the bite of 1983 and that the crying child was somehow aware of at least one if not True. multiple of past victims shoved Oh, no, I was going to say something. I was going to say Cassidy could have been before by 83, but I don't think so. But we also have the fact that there could be two missing children incidents, which I'm not going to go into right now. But, um... Huh. Inside the suit. But all of this brings us to the obvious question of this story. The curly black hair at the bottom of the suit. Mm -hmm. Who's Cassidy. that? And honestly, I'm not sure. Cassidy, which is what we've been assuming to be Golden Freddy's name this entire time, does indeed have black hair. But it's always been described as long and straight. In the fourth closet, we physically see Cassidy, and she's described as this. Quote, that's Cassidy, a girl with long black hair. And in the survival logbook, where we first learned of Cassidy's name, there's this girl who, again, has long, black, straight yeah. hair. And that's something I wouldn't worth say pointing long, out. For as chaotic okay. as the story in this franchise has been for all its iterations, names and hairstyles and colors of the victims seem to be fairly consistent. Susie is always associated with her dog. She has blonde hair with curls and blue eyes. 
Fritz. Cassidy always appears to have straight black hair. Yeah. Fritz always has freckles. The names and the faces of the surrounding characters may change, but the missing children all seem to be fairly consistent in both name and physical description, which is an important detail to keep track of moving forward. So could all of this mean that Vengeful Sorry. Spirit and Cassidy are two separate entities? That two spirits might both be in possession of Golden Freddy, or that Cassidy isn't really associated with Golden Freddy at all, and is instead the identity of one of the other animatronics. Because in Fourth Closet, she technically wasn't the one who was associated with Golden Freddy. Honestly, I don't know. I need to actually review uh. the evidence for this one, and I encourage you to do the same. The last thing worth mentioning for all of us to chew on is the mysterious slithering that's heard throughout this story. While the boys are exploring the abandoned pizzeria, they hear something inexplicable in the walls. What? Quote, while they were in the bathroom, Devin was was pretty sure he heard something slithering through the walls. Oh insane. yeah, I do remember this. From the way the I other boy's that. face is pale, he knew they heard it too. They didn't mention it either. It's never mentioned again. Nothing ever comes of this strange little detail, but it's clearly important because more inexplicable strange sounds come from the Freddy torso after Kelsey dies. In a later quote, did you leave anything else? He tried to ignore the fact That's that creepy. the scuttling sound was coming from the bear suit. Now, this is after Kelsey has already stopped squirming and twitching. So again, we're left with some mysterious force moving around in the pizzeria, creating these sorts of sounds. Is it Ennard? Is it the stitch rate? Is it something else? Like I said, lots to chew on with this particular book. But as you can tell, it's given us pretty explicit information about some of the biggest questions that this series has had. Now, it's up to us, as always, to put all those pieces together. And there certainly are a lot of pieces that will start coming together next time as we start looking into the power of agony and the twisted timeline of FNAF's next newest I've murderer, heard a bit about the Stitch Rain. Can't wait to read so about make it. make sure you hit that subscribe button to get notified of when oh. that video comes out. Are you kidding me? It's already over. Um, that was interesting. That was an interesting video. I want to do... Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't think anybody knows at this point. I think it's just created more. I don't know. I think he could be right with the fact that it's the vengeful spirit and Cassidy in the same suit, uh, which is why they're more pow like overpowered. Why Golden Freddy can glitch through walls and why he can like hold Will in hell. It just doesn't really answer any questions yet, so I guess we'll have to wait for the next episode. Uh, and while we do that, thank you so much for watching. Um, go and watch FNAF Unsolved on my channel if you're bored. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you later. Goodbye!